Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be working on is we're going to actually uh, cover the food settings and elements. So we're going to be covering that today and the first step to do that is we will obviously need to import our resources and stuff like that. So if you haven't done that, you want to do that right now and then you can go over to the mod elements tab and then click on the green icon. Once you have that, uh, a list will appear like this, and you're looking for the alphabetical order of F, uh, F O O, which is food, and then you can click on that. You can also press the key bind F, and it will create a food item. So you can go and type in the registry name. Now this is um, basically the ID for the actual element. So anything that you type in here will be the basically the registry for that. Now these can't repeat in your mods, so make sure that it's unique enough where it won't uh, cause any conflict. Um, another thing that it has to be letters, alphabetical order, it has to be English characters for the um, thing to work. And you can basically use capitals, lowercase, I don't think numbers, maybe, no, you can use numbers. You can go A4 or whatever but it can't start with a number. With that being said, um, adding a couple capitals, um, something like Canada, Canada, can't even spell today, uh, BC, you can see that the registry name where the capital begins after the lowercase, it has a underscore, so you don't need to have like underscore BC so you can do that but it's not recommended and you can just basically set it up like that so once you have a registry name we're just gonna call this one food for the tutorial and then we will be presented with the uh, first page of three so this page holds the visual properties of the actual food item you can basically add a 3d food model uh, for this, you'll need a JSON file um, from Blockbench or some other application that supports the model format that you need to actually create the actual models for. And um, it needs to be a JSON because it lists it right here, but also uh, OBJ is supported by the looks of it as well. Uh, this is your food texture item. So you basically import a food item uh, item texture. So when you import your textures and resources, make sure that you import that as a food item, not a block. And then the special information is basically like lore text. So anything that is um, the little subtitle stuff underneath the title of the item name is basically what is going to be put in here. You can use uh, color codes and I believe uh, break lines and stuff like that. I think it's like um, slash new or something like that maybe to create a new line I'm not entirely sure but you can basically create um, the color codes for sure uh, enable item glowing effect so basically this is like the enchanted um, glow effect if you enable this then you can basically set uh, the condition if you want to basically make it um, when it actually glows and stuff like that by default it'll always basically glow but you can also create a condition if you wanted to and you can basically make it so under certain circumstances it can glow uh, for example um, we'll open this up and we can basically create a condition by using an if statement testing for something like I don't know we'll go something really easy we'll test if it is uh, provided day in the world that's a good one to go with and then what we can do is we can basically return true so we would need a true block and then we would also need a return block and basically that will return true but we also need to return false if it is not day so that's basically what you do to set up a condition a very simple way to do it um, again you can basically add whatever you want under the condition as long as it follows the dependencies listed right here. All right, so that's the visual effects. So let's move on to the 
properties. So the in-game name is basically the display name for the item when you're actually holding it. It will basically say the name of the item and that's basically what the in-game name is. It's all throughout M Creator. You'll find the in-game name of these uh, certain items and stuff like that. So it's basically something different than the registry. You can basically uh, use spaces, letters, anything that you want, and it will uh, come up as uh, that particular name when you're actually holding the item. Rarity, uh, this just basically colors the the display name for the actual thing so common i believe is white there's a few different other colors for the uncommon rare and epic so you can basically create the different uh colors for those particular items some items in minecraft already use these i can't remember which ones but um it just basically colors the in-game name with a different color uh, there isn't a whole bunch of different colors to choose from so it's unfortunate but that's basically what you got uh, the creative tab, this is where you can basically find the item in the creative inventory. So if you're in creative mode, this will be the tab that it comes under. Uh, by default, it's food. Uh, that's what Minecraft uses at least. Uh, the stack size is how many items in that particular... Um, that how how many items in for this particular food can stack up to so you can set this to one any number between uh, minecraft uses 16 sometimes and 64 quite often and um i believe some some foods like uh dishes like the um mushroom soup and stuff like that only have a stack size of one so you can basically set that uh to a number of whatever you need it depends on what kind of use you're using it for as well. So, for example, you don't really want to make mushroom soup stack because it's a very bulky item to begin with. So, it has the bowl and stuff like that, so it makes sense to have it as one. But you can use it whatever you want. The nutrients value is how much the basically the player gets uh, for the food bar when it basically increases. Uh, this basically uh, four is half a, or two hearts or two hunger bars. Uh, each one value is one half of a heart so or half of a food bar. So if you wanted one bar completely, then you would use two. And then you would just double that and that's how many you're actually going to get. <clears throat> the saturation is basically uh, how good the uh, food actually stays for the long period of time. Uh, there's information on this uh, under the little question question mark down here. Uh, it says the first uh, decreases when the player performs energy tasks. So um, this is basically the how long it actually stays. Uh, I'm not too sure about the default values and stuff like that for what other items in the Minecraft um, food inventory actually has. I know that um, potatoes have a really high saturation, but I'm not sure of the exact amount. So you'll have to kind of look up that on Minecraft Wiki, but this basically controls how long the food lasts uh, for without you getting hungry again. Um, eating eat item results so basically th what this could do if you don't want to use it you can just leave it blank but if you want to use something like um, a soup or something like that you can basically give back a bowl and or a cup or something like that depending on what you want so if I wanted to say make this food item like mud, uh, mud stew or something like that then I can give back the bowl after I eaten it and uh, is this food an item? Basically what this does, uh, or pardon me, uh, is this food meat? So what this will do is it'll allow you to feed it to wolves and other creatures, like um, specifically wolves to regenerate the um, food level for their hearts and stuff like that. And if you check this, then you'll be able to feed it to them. Is it always edible? So basically you'll always be able to eat this item regardless if you're hungry or not. And eating speed, this is the default value for eating food. So if you want to eat it faster, I think you would increase the number uh, 20. No, if you want to make it go faster then what you're going to do is decrease the number. Um, higher numbers make it la uh, take longer to eat. So you want to set that. 
the e and item animation so basically there's different animations that you can basically use for drinking and eating and this will vary on the item in front of you when you're actually doing that so eat drink block so when you're placing a block bow animations and crossbow animations uh, none and a spear as well. So things like the trident would be under that one So the last tab that we have is for the triggers and these are basically the procedures and events that you can basically set up for The item food item that you basically have there are nine total right now uh, There might be more in the future But uh, I'll cover what these ones basically do and what the trigger events basically um, How they basically trigger so when right-clicked in air, uh, this is uh, basically the player location. So uh, basically when you right-click not on a block, this will be triggered. So anywhere um, that is an air block not selected by a block, then this will basically run. Uh, when block right-clicked, uh, when right-clicked on blocks, this is the hand location. So it will run the procedure located on the block that you click on uh, when food eaten so basically when you eat the food this will trigger an event uh, you can set up a procedure to do something like add a potion effect or whatever you want any of these can basically do anything as long as the the dependencies shown underneath the um, actual title is actually used if it's outside of that dependency bar then obviously it won't work uh, when living entity is hit with the item so basically when you hit a living entity with the item such as like um, punching them with it then you can basically trigger something to happen when the item in the inventory tick so basically if you want it to do something constantly on a loop then these are the two procedures that you want uh, to work with uh, this one will do it while it's in the inventory regardless if it's in the main hand or not where the when item in hand tick basically will only run if it's in the main hand. So there's two different tick uh, options that you can basically do when you're selecting that. You can also have a whole bunch of different uh, dependencies that you can basically work with. Uh, when item is crafted or smelted. So basically this is good for adding advancements and stuff like that if you wanted do that or have some type of uh, effect or potion or whatever you want to do you can basically make it so um, something happens when it's crafted or smelted when entity swings item so basically when the entity goes ahead and like moves their hand either to break a block or eats it or something like that then what will happen is this will trigger when item is dropped by player so when the player throws it on this ground this will basically run so that's all there is to it after you're finished um, setting up your procedures and your properties and your visual effects what you can do is you can go ahead and click save mod element and then it will save to your workspace um, mod elements tab right here and you'll see it in the folder or wherever you're basically creating the element. So that's all the time that I have for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.